guys, Jamie here, keeping it coy. Welcome back to the channel, and if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. So in today's video, I have skipped a few steps, but I'm gonna talk you through uh, what I've been up to. Um, leaks are fixed, I managed to fix them. Uh, a couple of people did uh, suggest the rubberized uh, tape. Can't remember what it's called, thank you Daz for that. But where the joints was leaking from, don't think it would have uh, would have worked but I fixed it and uh, if it leaks anymore then I should be able to put tape over what I've done now so uh, I will take you down the filter house and uh, show you what I've been up to it's gonna be a bit noisy down here because I've, I've worked out what the uh, pump noise is it's somehow sucking air in from somewhere so I'm yet to fix that one let me spin you around Pump down there, as you can probably hear, making one hell of a racket. Apologies for the noise, but that, that noise is sucking air in from somewhere because uh, I occasionally see the odd bubble come back this way. Um, so I'm guessing the air is coming in from somewhere in these, so I've got to uh, tweak around with them, see if I can stop that. But in the end, it wasn't the uh, ball valve itself that was leaking, it was the uh, joint there which uh, that's all now fixed good old CT1 I let that dry uh, last night and that's now working a treat uh, same with the leak that was down here any of the ball valves that were leaking um, have just been tightened up and they're all now fine but there was a leak down there and it wasn't where the flexi hose attaches to the hose tail it was the actual hose tail Oops. it was the hose tail uh, to that fit in there so as you can see I've a bit of the old CT1 and as you can see underneath we're all now pretty much dry reconnected that this morning you may also notice I got a bucket of minion water and you know what that means that means Oh, there's worms in there as well, loads of them. <laughs> the filters are taking out all my fish food. But yes, the filter is up and running. So, as you can probably see there, we are 17 degrees in the pond. It's a bit wet because I've recently had the lid off. Uh, we're doing good with that. I think I've got the, uh, the bitty bobs inside all set correctly. But uh, I'll open it up real quick. Um, and... Uh, Anyone that's got one of these Awazi drums or a similar Awazi drum, if uh, if anyone can point out if I need to adjust my uh, sensors, that's the word, um, please let me know. Bear with me, I'll get the lid off. There we go. So as you can see, it's just recently done a clean, um, hence the minging mucky bucket around the corner. Um, so I've got that sensor, as you can see, set. The bottom of that says water level after a clean, so that's pretty accurate. Um, and I've got the float switch sitting about there uh, as I say if any, anyone um, if Lee Hatfield or Phil from Telford Koi Pond or any of my followers uh, have an Oasi drum if you can tell me if that's roughly about right I'd appreciate it because the instructions are pretty much useless with the, uh, the sensors I mean they help me set the rest of it up but uh, yeah the uh, the information it gives you on where to put these sensors is pretty useless so uh, I'm just going to do a bit of uh, bit of research or maybe even give Oasi a call and see if they can tell me but uh, yeah if any of you guys know the answer that would be muchly appreciated but yeah I'm just going to uh, pop the lid back on oh as you can see look the air's working as well don't forget to mention that got the air working which on that note let's pan you around got the old bottom drain working all off the one pump that's what I bought from uh, Market Japan Koi Imports there it's a four way adapter just in case I uh, needed to siphon some air off or add anything else to the system um, so I've got extra pretty good but yeah so uh, I don't know if that's I haven't put any media in there yet just letting it run for a couple of hours and see how often it cleans and whatnot. Not that I really have a clue what I'm doing with it. But uh, yeah, 
just see how long it basically takes to fill that bucket up down there obviously it's not going to be a bucket system eventually but that's what i'm doing for now until i uh, get round to that bit but that air might be a bit too strong there so uh, what i may have to do is increase the air in there by lowering the air in here so if i tweak that one just even a millimeter that knocks that back quite a bit but increases that quite a bit and if i tweak it one more time look you'll see how much of a difference a tiny little tweak look, makes that's now a jacuzzi but in here we're still bubbling pretty good and that is why I've got a four-way adapter because I can always just siphon off a tiny bit of air if it's a bit too too powerful uh, this is the uh, EA Evolution Aqua air pump 70 got it as a kit the air stones are still on this pond um, but Obviously, I've, that air pump was on this pond, as you all know. Um, but as you can see, I've still got air bubbling away in there. Because I've shut down the, uh, the fish tank, I'm borrowing my uh, fish tank air pump for it. I'm going to uh, put it in this electric box and feed the hoses out of the holes there for now. Um, but yeah, I've just connected that up so I can put the air pump on there over there while i'm testing it but yeah so far it's been uh, i didn't leave it on overnight last night because the drum kept erroring uh, because i didn't have the uh, sensors in the right place apparently and it filled up that box within two minutes uh, it came up with uh, error 33 which when i looked in the uh, the manual that was 20 consecutive cleans so uh, yeah, I, knew, I knew full well they needed dropping a little bit um, but we're running the pump currently on 80%, which according to uh, Mark's sheets, uh, I believe was around 15,000 litres an hour. So I'm turning the pond over uh, one and a half times basically, or nearly one and a half times an hour. Uh, as you can see, the skimmer is working absolutely brilliantly. It's drawing in really, really well. So the surface of the pond is quite clear today which makes a nice change the bubbles are causing me a, obviously a, a slow not a dead spot but a slow spot in this corner um, but with the flow if I turn the bubbles off for a second actually you'll see the flow around the pond it's absolutely phenomenal let's turn the bubbles completely off but I don't know if you can quite see it in the middle here towards that edge because both jets are currently pushing along there you can actually see where the water's hitting that wall and then rising to the surface and because now the air bubbles are off look you'll see all this muck that was in this well, not muck but oh the feed has just gone off over there fish are flashing all over the place nom, 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 nom. but yeah all, all the bits that were along there look clear as crystal again now and they're all making their way down to the skimmer I've been playing with the uh, with the valves in here because the skimmer wasn't pulling an awful lot and um, wasn't moving so I just twisted that just a tiny bit if I twist it any more than that I can't run the pump at 80% because that side dropped too quick so I played around with that until I got it at a beautiful level and now everything seems to be working obviously if I crank the pump up to 100% I may have to open that a bit more but obviously the stronger the pump is the more draw through everything i would get anyway but i think 15,000 liters should be more than sufficient and that's roughly where i want to be running it um, but yeah obviously once i get my backy shower uh, on there it's just a case of working out how much water i want out of there and how much water i want out of there i kind of want about 10 to 12,000 liters an hour out of that and then the rest coming through the underwater return down there but yeah, I don't know if you guys can kind of see it on the camera. Maybe if I get a different angle. You see it probably a bit better here, where the water look, hitting this wall. And the flow, you can't really see it because there's nothing on the uh, pond surface. But if I say whack a leaf in. Look at that for a flow look. Considering it's a dead square pond and I've only got two returns, 
that is a pretty darn good flow and all the, all the rubbish I've tried throwing little bits of leaves and whatnot in in all different spaces everywhere on the pond currently obviously I've that that pipe there has got to be changed into a backy shower but currently the angle that's pointing everything ends up in the uh, in a skimmer I mean it hasn't taken that that leaf long to work its way around the pond let's follow it but yeah I'm, I'm actually really chuffed with how apart from the liner being a bit wrinkly really chuffed at how this has all turned out but yeah look at that probably about 30 seconds 45 seconds the leaf to get from one corner of the pond to the other so that's pretty good and you can probably tell by that corner that there's no no crud or anything sitting in there so I don't really have any dead spots on the surface um, I do a little bit when the air's on but only a little bit um, but yeah so that is all looking pretty good the wind is uh, still working a treat obviously you saw me seal the rest of that in uh, the other day but it is now officially a fully working pond um, just got to put that lid on because that's probably going to clean itself again any minute and the float switch looks like it's getting ready to drop um, but it, it will do for now because of the, the crud that's in the pond and um, that'll clean quite regularly at the minute um, Obviously I've got the UV to hook up, uh, but again for now I'm just going to stick a plug on that and stick that on there. That's my bucket that I'm covering them electrics with, just the same as I've got a bucket over that, that way. Because eventually obviously the box that's in there will come and sit in the filter house with a roof on, blah blah blah. But yeah, so get the UV, get a plug for the UV. I haven't actually got one so I need to dip out and get one. Um, and then yeah. Just keep my eye on this for the rest of the day see how much the uh, bucket fills up I kind of want it to fill up sort of every half a day basically that that sort of size bucket I would think that's a 15 litre bucket that way I'll be taking a, roughly about 30 litres out a day is the plan um, I can empty it then once a day uh, or twice a day water the plants a bit do whatever just for now as a temporary solution until I work out where I want the uh, the waste to go but let me just quickly pop the lid back on this and we can uh, get a clean cycle going because uh, as you all know Oasi drums will only clean with the lid on unless a pond builder friend of mine did say you can just unscrew that sensor which is what shows the lids on stick it on top of that sensor and you can clean it with the lid off but why would I want to do that and get myself wet so I'm going to snap back to you once I've got the lid on and we'll have a look at it cleaning. Right. So the lid's on. Uh, it's not actually cleaning itself. I was expecting that the float switch would have dropped by now, but let's have a go. So I'm going to hit the clean button. And as you can see, look, the noise comes out of there and into my bucket. We do miss the bucket a little bit, but meh, that's as far that way as I can put it. Pop the lid back on that, and that's, that's how it works. So, yeah, but to be honest, the drum itself, like getting it all plugged in and wired up, the instructions aren't the fan most bestest in the world, but it's pretty self-explanatory. So anyone that's thinking of getting one of these, don't be too scared of it. The hardest thing, to work out is getting your water level right. You'll probably remember seeing there was a, a thing in there on the back saying where the water level would be. So this isn't the, you know, don't measure the top of the pond to the top, the top of this. Work out where your water level is going to be in the pond and match it to the line there. My earlier videos, you'll remember I lasered um, and marked it. That was the top of the pond. That was where I wanted the water level to be at maximum and that was the water level where I wanted it to be minimum because that was basically in line with the uh, the top of the skimmer bit where it is now and then the minimum would have been the middle part of the skimmer um, and basically the, I measured the top of that then and got this the right level to the maximum in there and the minimum level was just above the minimum level in there 
Um, so that worked out an absolute treat. And I was thinking, you know, if it didn't work on one of them, then I'll take an inch of water out and it should hopefully work on the other one or vice versa. Uh, but yeah, really, really, really happy with how everything is turning out. So a uh, very slow start, but we're on a sprint finish. Fishies are doing well. They're uh, going a bit green at the minute because their UV has stopped working. So uh, you can't. First time it's ever gone green in there, which ain't bad for them being in there for about six months. And there is ten fish in there now, I think. But guys, come and have a look at these fry. Oh, can't really call them fry anymore. Some of them are massive. I'd say there's a couple in here pushing 30. But the, the new pump uh, that I've had to put on, as you saw yesterday, the EA Vary pump, even though they're, they're, they're set to pretty much the same speed, the same amount of water is going through the filter and backy shower as it was previously. No, you're not being fed, you've just been fed. Um, but yeah, same amount of water going through, but the water clarity in here right now is better than it was with, that, with the uh, old JBO pump. Um, I think them kind of basket-y designs doesn't allow the muck to suck in from the bottom as well as these uh, EA Vary pumps. Yeah, let me uh, let me see if I can lift the lid up for a minute and we'll get a better look at the fish use in the water. And there we go, guys. Other than the bubbles on the surface, the water clarity in there is phenomenal. That's, uh, that's encouraging. I know I said we'd already had a feed, but that's encouraging. Up to the surface. The water parameters are all back to being spot on now after the pump being uh, off for a good few hours. Feeds in. The lid's just been lifted, so it will take them a second to uh, to come up. But when they do, some of the black ones in there. Yeah. See, it's always that Orchiba that's first up. Well, he's not really an Orchiba anymore, he's a Soragoy, all his colour's gone, but... Yeah, they are doing uber fantastic. A little homemade backy shower, bless it. Stainless steel still way. Unfortunately, it will have to go onto this pond as a temporary because uh, the money that I'd saved up to buy the backy shower had to be spent on a new EA pump. But as I said in my previous video, I do need that anyway. Um, so yeah, next job, get the media uh, in the... Uh, drum uh, this is the box with, that all the electrics came in with the uh, drum filter I've got a few spare cable ties and egg bits and bobs that I haven't actually had to use um, but it also come with a little tub of bio kick now you all know I absolutely love your eyes of bio kick premium uh, but this is their normal bio kick it's like a powder form I haven't opened it yet but yeah so I've got that, I've got the uh, Pond Bomb that I won from Skeggy, thank you very much Daz, uh, and what else have I got? I've got some Pond Balls that are underneath that backy shower, so when I move that I've got some of them in there too, and there's a storage box under that bench that I made when I built the bench, and then I've also got, yeah that's it, I've also got the uh, Biokick Premium. Uh, excuse the mess still in here, I haven't got round to uh, sorting all this yet. But yeah, the Wazi Biokick Premium is that one there. Um, I have run out of the uh, the cheap uh, sort of bio stuff that I had. Um, but yeah, there's the uh, there's the Pom Bomb. Pretty much there now, just got to uh, sort through all this. Keep what I need to keep. Bin now what I need to bin. Um, and jobs are good. Job's an absolute good one. Sort through all their food, sort through 
uh, what I'm keeping out of there, which is not a lot. That is now going up for sale once I've given it a clean. If anybody wants a lovely uh, fluval uh, curved fronted fish tank, it's four foot. Let's get a side view look. It's got a nice curved front on it. Makes the fishes look bigger than they appear. Huh. But yeah, um, lovely little tank. Worked really, really well. I've said it before and I'll say it again. That is where I'm up to. Um, so yeah, I'm literally just going to let that run now for a good 24, 48 hours. And see how the drum's performing. As I say, if anybody does know more about them uh, sensors than me, if you could let me know, that would be fantastic. The drum's, st or the pump's still sucking up bubbles. But yeah. I don't think it's done a clean since I've cleaned it. Well, it may have done one. It may have done one. But look at the crud that's coming out of there. Look. Loads and loads of wormies. But yeah, so I will call it a day here, guys. Um, can't do much more today other than go out and get a plug for that. So I can plug that in there. But I'm not going to be turning it on just yet because as, I, as I've said to uh, a few friends and YouTubers, I'm gonna leave it green for when I put the fish in there and uh, get some spawning brushes and see if they uh, will do a little spawn for me. Because uh, once all the fish are out of there, they're coming out of there, all of them, and going into here. It's 10 medium sized koi. All, all, all above 30, some of them are at 40, and then all these will go down there. And then this area will finally be tidied up. Woo! Be able to get to me bench and me tables and me other benches, and need to find a new home for me nets. They used to live just behind this bench here, but oh, I suppose I could. Oh, the drum's cleaning. But yeah, they used to live on their mucks there, uh, just out of sight. But, uh, yeah, that, that insulation I'm using on the uh, roof, when I uh, put the roof on that, which is another job that's still got to happen. Uh, yeah, that's about it guys. So, massive thank you for everyone that's uh, followed me along this journey and still a few more bits to come and uh, if you haven't seen me for a while the uh, once this pond is fully fully finished and I'm happy with everything and got the copings on got the filter house completely finished and everything's running all hunky-dory um, next pond build starts um, getting a little pond down here uh, that one's going to be a brick pond um, I did show you a few months back but I've already picked up the, uh, oh, the drum's cleaning again. It's two in, two cleans in the space of a minute. Right. Looks like I'm going to be readjusting them sensors then, doesn't it? But, uh, yeah, let me spin you around again really quick. Big old pile of bricks. God knows how many there is there. I actually managed to pick them up for free on Facebook. Um, obviously, I've still got a lot of cleaning up to do down here. And the old bit of carpet that was the underlay for my old pond. Um, them two bags are empty, but that bag down there does still have some soil in it. Uh, from other bits and bobs that I'm about to dig up along the way. Um, but yeah, that's a concrete base that the bricks are sat on, ready for me shed. I have got some slabs though to make it look a bit prettier, which is under that pile of rubble. So I'll be uh, putting some slabs down there and putting a shed on. The fake grass is still doing great. Got a bit, bit of grass growing in the wheelbarrow. People keep asking me that come around to visit. Why on earth have you got grass growing in the wheelbarrow? Well, right now I don't need to use the wheelbarrow. But this is what happens when my dog pees. Smallest dog in the world. And absolutely destroys the grass. Um, so yeah, I am uh, keep re-turfing spots, but as you can see, look, I think the last area I re-turfed is that bit, and that's doing really, really well. Um, but yeah, all I do is scrape, scrape the grass up, make it a tiny little deep, not deep, but a little dip, and uh, 
and just grab a handful of this and stick it in so it's all soggy mud just grab a handful of that stick it in it saves waiting for seed to grow i've already grown it <laughs> yeah so if anybody suffers for the same problem and you're forever reseeding your lawn get a bucket or something like that that the sun can get into do need some sun keep it watered well grass doesn't matter whether it's watered well or not the more water it's got in there as you can see the easier it is just to lift a handful out and stick it in your hole great little tip but yeah all my plants are doing well my lemon on that lemon tree is finally starting to turn yellow right. i'll have some lemon water or maybe some lemon chicken i don't know don't often buy lemons so most of my apples have fallen off my apple tree so i'm a bit disappointed about that this year and we've only got about six or seven left we had hundreds at the beginning of the year but got that one down there doing well uh, got another one in there doing well and they are granny smith apples but i don't know the tree's gone a bit a bit dry i don't know whether that's over watering or under watering um, but yeah it did really really well last year but this is what's happened to most of the apples look kind of stopped growing gone a bit wrinkly and then just randomly fall off so any king gardeners out there can tell me what i've done wrong with that this year uh, i don't know oh yeah everyone's are doing well the plum tree's thriving which last year that didn't although again something is attacking the leaves oh what is it with things in my garden eating my bloody plants I don't know, buddlier bushes shot up this year. It's huge. That needs a good prune. Tomato plants doing well. Anyway, I'm just waffling again. Strawberries are doing fantastic though. But yeah, call it a day there, guys. This one's been long enough. Um, I'm going to get that media in the drum um, while that's running. Um, let that all start to sink. Um, that way when I put the fish in there obviously it won't be mature but hopefully it will just start to sink by then and we'll start bubbling uh, well checking all my bio stuff when I put the fish in there another tip for those of you who don't know if you have set up a pond and you're waiting to put your fish in there don't put in your bio starters until a fish is in the pond um, I've seen many people do that actually so, oh pond's up and running quick stick in the gel that will help mature the filters no if there's no ammonia to feed on all your bacteria is going to die and need to be fed to stay alive so no fish in the pond means no ammonia no ammonia means no bacteria um, so yeah don't don't put in your starter gels and your filter bombs and all the rest of it until a fish has hit the water um, little tip anyway i keep waffling so i'm going to love you and leave you um, and we'll catch you all on the next one